In this video, I want to talk about how to calculate rotational inertias when many objects are connected together in a composite object, when an object is composed of many different parts. Uh, so, uh, it's a really relatively straightforward process, but I'm going to show you a couple examples here so you can see how this works. So, for the first example, I'm going to have a, a long rod here rotating about its center. So, there's a center. It'll rotate about that center point. And this is of length L, and for this entire example, the length of that rod will be length L. Length L, and we'll call this a mass capital M. Okay, so if you have a long thin rod rotating about its center, uh, like a baton, then that would be I is equal to 1 12th ML squared. I remember 12 because it's, I think, of a ruler. Ruler is 12 inches, so 1 12th ml squared. Uh, so let's do something here. Let's add something to it. Let me add, let me take that same rod here, and I'm going to add a second one to it at its center here, perpendicular, also of length L, like a propeller, propeller blades here. And so if I have these two connected and they're rotating together all as one unit, um, then we simply add them together. And that's the, that's the basic or bottom line. We add rotational inertias when we have composite objects. We just look at each individual object and then add them all up. So here's a 1 12th m l squared. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same assembly, the propeller blades, if you want to call it that. Same length, same mass. Okay. Like this. This is supposed to be the center. What if I add on a mass here at the end, right at the tip of that guy? I'll cut that little m, and one over here just to keep it balanced. Okay, little m. These are called singleton masses because they're one single mass rotating about the center. Okay, think of it like a planet orbiting uh, the sun. These are called singletons. Okay, singleton, and we just add those guys on, and let's see how we do that. So first of all, I have the two propeller blades, 1 12th ml squared plus 1 12th ml squared, plus for a singleton, it's its mass, so low m, times how far is away from the center squared. So if the entire length is l, this would be l over 2 quantity squared, so far, how far it is, its center of mass is from the center, plus the other one, L over 2 quantity squared, okay? So I'm just adding together. So the two propeller blades and each of the masses and their, and their uh, distances from the, the center of rotation. And then finally, I'll do one more thing here. I'll take that same assembly, that propeller type blade thing, I got one over here, Rotating about the center, centers of everything. I got little m over here, and another little m over here. Okay, and this time what I'm going to do is going to add uh, the propeller shaft or like a pulley type system right onto it. So I'm going to add that on here, and I'm going to say that's a solid disc. I'll call it mass disc m sub d to to differentiate between these guys. And it has a radius, its radius is little r, let's say. So the total rotational inertia, as you can guess, we just add these things up. So this is 1 12th ml squared plus 1 12th ml squared. And then plus ml squared over 2. I'm going to multiply by 2 because I'm running out of room here. Plus... The, mat, the rotational inertia of a solid disk about its center is one half mass of disk times its radius squared. Okay, so we just add these things up. So in the big scheme of things, when we have a, a, a conglomeration of objects or composite objects that are built of smaller things that we know the rotational inertias of, I can simply add them together. And once you have this I, then you can use the typically where it's used is the torque equation. So if I apply a certain torque, let's say I hang a weight off of here, okay, R cross F, and I know the rotational inertia, object 1, object 2, 3, or 4, or, or what have you, then I can solve for angular accelerations. So um, this is how you uh, can find the total 
rotational inertia when you have objects that are composed of many smaller objects that you know the rotational inertias of.